So everybody's eyes uh, are based off of a curved triangle piece from their spun vision from their hearts. Everybody's spun on their left side usually, almost everyone. Well, everyone actually in this universe. <laughs> and so um, I'm not exclusively that way. I'm very limited and I have other spins the other direction equally, which means I see both directions with my eyes. What that also means is I've been able to observe over the decades how rainbows have changed in appearance. Uh, in the 90s, they were the standard rainbow that everybody talked about, Roy G. Biv. There was not much v variance on it. Then we start getting into the 2000s, and uh, I don't know what to say. It's like the same, take the, I use the subway bread analogy. There's an infinite number of mysterious chemical additives to subway bread. And as we got into the 2000s, and a lot of them are based off of strange things they do to the body, like as though they're addictive because of chromatic luminance, hues. So what I'm saying is it really ruined everyone's bodies worse than any other drugs possible. And I'm getting into this because it seems like the rainbow started, let's say, mutating. And I would see odd colors and odd color mixtures that were off from the regular, especially kind of encroaching on either end of the rainbow spectrum, or sometimes in between other colors along its length. And the result at the point where we hit about coronavirus is uh, seems like everything in the universe is heated up pretty evenly, and we're now dealing with um, a steady uh, color wheel where my eyes, when I view a rainbow, there's the ultraviolet and the red shift on the other side, and then the colors of the ultraviolet-like spectrum of those colors on that side of green bleed over into a continuation of the colors on the other spectrum and kind of mix, enhance across so what you really have is combining uh, extremes as more what used to be broken yeah. frequencies in the air. But the sun is an always changing force, always evolving. Yes. Scientists, everyone will tell you this. So why he's saying this is true. Solar flares and patterns and shifts across the sun have drastically changed in the last 30 to 50 years to this point today. And it causes a variance in color that while it may appear as though there's enormous wavelengths that the human eye can't see or even insects and like as if you know our vision's that bad even the worst people's vision who can't see the difference between 8-bit to 10-bit to 12-bit color can tell certain things are different now why this is important is because when you're going into a video editor you can say that you don't need 10-bit color but that's ignoring the fact that people can't tell what's different sometimes, but it seems more in focus and better lit when you adjust the chrominance, the luminance of images, these different factors, the gamma even, will yeah. change the perception, just like how, uh, you know, uh, this guy, um, whatever his name is, CD, suck these nuts. Anyways, he talks about color, he's got a silver lower half of his face. It's important to acknowledge those factors because every light source changes to every surface and he's not getting into that whatsoever and in fact a light source hitting a surface for long enough may change the surface the way it reacts to light this yeah. is true with sunlight this is true with uv frequencies there's uv dyeing methods with animal urine that make clothing permanently react differently yes so without acknowledging this, that's why videos look so bad, because if you don't have the eyesight, you need somebody with incredible eyes to determine. Yeah, well, here's another factor. Okay, so... Living in Nevada in the 90s, there's a massive amount of uranium radiation, and there's a massive amount of gold mines nearby trying to output ions of gold through various methods to combat that. So as a result, I have a special appreciation for the hue shifts between watered down piss yellow and true gold color from sunlight. They're, the color yellow um, 
it's awfully hard to get. There's a few fruits that are yellow in nature, and they actually evolved to be that way because of uranium um, abuse by humanity. So what you also have to factor in is that the color of yellow in space didn't really change, but the entire atmosphere was so fa saturated with everyone's piss that it actually caused any sunlight coming in to be saturated into the yellow spectrum. So gold is highly magnetic, and as it builds up ions, the sun is usually putting out gold along with whatever else it's currently cooking. So gold will build up into any planet, any surface, and build up its magnetic, um, basically like activation point. It's ions. It's ions until it causes growth in animals and plants it, and moss. It causes um, intelligence increasal as it actually can be stored in animals and humans' brains and organs like it's a battery more safely through as sunlight luminous. as luminance, which is then used for imagination. Because when you use your imagination, you see something in your head, that's like inverted sight with stored light energy. And so the less light energy truly you have from digesting things and going yeah. into your brain, the less you're going to be able to even imagine things with high quality uh, colors that are punchy and uh, even inside of your own mind, you'll know that they're not good enough. Yeah, so for example, I was looking at rainbows back in 2019 when everything was imbalanced where the center point on the rainbow was actually gold and not green. And that was weird, and the green was all the way off the spectrum to the side. Did you say 2012? No, 2019. 2019. Oh. Yeah. Th many things have happened. Like in 2012, there was a few months where the sun was only burning hydrogen. Yeah, it was blue in 2013. It was yeah, in yeah, it did it more in 2013, though. It was very blue. Yeah. Blue frequency shift. And right here. here's another interesting thing. I mean, I can just talk forever because this camera has infinite space. Um, the, the sun appeared to be farther away when it was burning hydrogen gas. And this is an interesting thing people need to think about. The appearance of how large the sun or moon is in the sky is largely dependent upon gas refractiveness. So, you like, for example, when the moon or sun first come up, in certain parts of the world, for example, they'll seem so huge. They'll exaggerate in cartoons, but not too much. Sometimes it can look real big. I've seen it personally. In Florida, it always looks big when it's touching the water and going yeah. down. Everybody says it's massive. And so everybody knows that hydrogen is a very refractive. clear, refractive, reflective surface in various ways. Different types of hydrogen bundle molecules. So it's like... When the sun was hydrogen looking, it appeared to be farther away infinitely because it's like the light, there's this effect like where there's a push-pull effect on a camera where things will appear to be farther away. But it's like the sun is continuously feeding so many ions out that from our perspective, it's like we're seeing the ions hit us and it gives this effect like the distance out to the star is infinite as it's all refracted back away by the Earth's atmosphere, like it's a giant like magnifying scope angled the wrong way so you know everything seems farther away, which uh, caused for some very odd weather effects, that's for sure. Yeah, and a massive seasonal associative disorder through the Yeah, years. definitely. Ever since then, everything's been shifting uh, horrifically. I've experienced quite a bit of it. That's why yeah. I'm getting UV light even from a tanning bed, if not anything else. And, and everybody needs to just realize that the magnetic effects on any planet will continue to increase. Just because the planet was temporarily tilted because of so much industrial waste, yes, people destroyed the planet. So it magnetically was as if it was dead and shielded from the sun from improving for a while. But, you know, the sun just keeps boring through any chemical substance, just keeps boring through those clouds. So the matrix is actually totally false. Like, yeah. and all their beliefs that different planets, you know, clouds constantly cover their surface, no. The sun 
doesn't allow that. That's not how physics work. That's not how solar systems work. Yeah, it, 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 there's so many reasons that's stupid. Now, let me explain. This is the final part of why color science is so incredibly fucked up, even for people who can't see it. When you mess with these chrominance and luminance values, what you look on on, a, on a, the, even the, the spectrograph isn't going to show you what I'm about to tell you. The amount of moisture and the different gases, depending upon a day where it's blustery from above and sweeping down, you know, through yeah. the clouds, creating a different type of clouds even in the sky, the, the sweeping, whatever those are, stratus clouds. Well, those type of gases being forced down, which happen all the time, randomly Here, all, the, all the time, yeah. And across the world, I'm just saying, any yeah. mountainous region, even into valleys where mountains are near them will cause a different effect, a different lighting. And you know what people have been doing even on film instead of adjusting for this all these years? Because there's manual, all video editors are based off of manual editing composition modes. They just shoot on a different day. Can you imagine in the digital era today, them still shooting on a different day when, for example, we have test video. Yeah. I know I'm going a little long-winded here, but we run across a hill with the camera and it's uploaded to YouTube and we run down and on over to a canal and that particular day the greens are in high priority due to gases being blown down from the upper atmosphere and you can see all the moss whereas on another day you simply cannot pull those colors using you know all the chrominance and luminance and the other values in those categories of sure or whatever the alpha channel it won't look the same and when people say it's mysterious, it's not. It's all gases. It's just like the sun. The sun's yeah. gases too, and it changes too. So that's why everybody likes filming in warehouses because yeah. they like consistency and over control of scenarios. Whereas we literally wait around. Like there was some <laughs> really delicious, uh, like platinum-like mist floating around in the hills when we filmed Goldman opener that I'll be releasing one of these years when I can edit it. Um, I need more mist so I can feel good, so I can edit things. So on that day, it was really misty, and it's like the sun was entirely invisible, but it had been turned by the sheets of mist perfectly all the way up in the atmosphere into like, kind of like how they try to fog out lights in a studio, but it was natural, and all the magnetic energy light of the sun was coming through. So I am absolutely certain with the DJI, which is able to capture... Here's the key. DJI is really going far with this, this uh, actually capturing the full spectrum of the rainbow and actually magnetic roundness instead of twisted eyeballs. Because it, it's a pinhole. It's a pinhole. It sucks all the light in and auto refracts at different angles, the different colors. And uh, that footage is going to look incredible in extra 3D with like as though there's like extra cartoony but realistic like rainbowing around everything. And that's why I'm saying the platinum and black light method is so important here because platinum and black light is in the uh, rainbow and in the sunlight now, massively. Yeah, and that's a platinum is not the color of pure light white, which will white light, which we all know is caused by a perception of filtering through the, the Earth's yeah. atmosphere. It's its own channel that's actually brighter and technically considered a color when you compare between the two because our eyes are all comparisons. Yeah. So you can easily determine platinum from its chrominance and luminance on any vaguely white surface from two light sources versus another light source. You yeah. know. Of course, when you're trying to determine them, not when you're blending well, the two that's what I'm into saying, each but other. Raw electric light coming out of some, say, metal surface, say steel or whatever they make light bulbs out of, the, the metal will change its color yeah. uh, and different sources of where the electricity is coming from for that grid in your area will be radically different colors of electricity. Exactly. These days electricity is mostly the color of um, hydroelectricity. lithium, hydroelectricity type angle color hue. Leaving only your lights to filter the type yeah. of uh, frequency. So my point is this that the issue here with people's vision is they can't see what improves the overall picture quality. Yeah. Especially because their eyes are almost always due to sugar glass turning one direction, mostly. Yes. But because they could never visibly view as scientists, they could never prove what I can prove, which is that 
there's a sympathetic reaction of colors across to the other side of the spectrum because I, I'm twisted both directions and uh, another few years my bones will have stopped um, hurting from that and I'll actually receive health benefits from that rather than feeling stressed out all the time but in the meantime I can still see so much more colors than everyone else and I can tell you 3D glasses where you're actually supporting the chrominance um, reciprocation from either side of the you know ultraviolet and red spectrum really is key to creating good 3D effects with, with uh, movie glasses. Yeah, and I guess I just touch on it one more time. What we're talking about is spectrums that used to be broken and unknown, yes. unsensible by sensors and spectrogram charts, even sound waves. You know, every method can collect light data in a certain yeah. way. What they're forgetting about is those spectrums are caused by broken frequencies. And as the sun heals itself because it's a massive burning ball and flames always burn back into a regular existence no matter what irregularities they have. That these perceived, like I say, giant color spectrums on what we and even hummingbirds can see and bees as light is simply greater concentrations of the same color like he's saying by broken f It stopped recording there. When? Just what ten seconds, like right then. Okay, well, bees. What, we, what we have in common with bees and hummingbirds is that we all are seeing the same frequencies, just not as intensely. The broken frequencies on either side of the spectrum, when you cross them over and combine them, because they are the broken ends, the bleeding off of the fine flare, you call it, of the sun's color gamma range, and even our atmosphere reacting to its range. Those are still frequencies we would be able to see if they were, like I said, combined. Now, as the sun and even the magnetosphere evens out frequencies, those become accessible scientifically for cameras to at least record and reproduce. And they matter when it comes to the overall alpha channels and the image quality and clarity massively. And you'll see it even if you have terrible eyes, was my point. Yeah. And my point here is this. Um... I was scanned and given some, some quality magnetic ink in uh, late 2019 and they said my brain, the back, the front, none of it was divided into separate channels <laughs> yet, but it was dividing. Um, they didn't say that, but I was well aware that that's what's happening uh, due to how my vision works and the way my uh, ambidextrousness uh, affects my body and everything else. So. Um, my point here is I need to get my brain scanned again for the purpose of science and get paid for it because if you compare my scans two, three years ago to now, you'll find that uh, I'm now more split down the center and that when I'm looking at light that's damaged, my athletic brain vision is actually pulling the data that's damaged from either far end of the spectrum and mixing it and actually, so let's say, software processing it in my brain live. That's why I keep smoking weed, keep eating fruit, etc. As my vision gets better, so I'm actually seeing things better than a camera can and that needs to be studied from mine and other people's vision as it improves. Or my, you'll never get anywhere scientifically. My point is this. It's very obvious to me, while my brother has even better vision than me, that I have a lot more um, rods than cones. I see things in a slightly bluer spectrum. When I close my eyes, everything looks pretty damn blue when I you know, open them again when the sun's been shining through my filtered yeah. eyelids, which kind of indicates that because my eyelids are the filtration, and they're brown, which is a neutral combination of other colors. I mean, lightly, you know, I'm not a white, white, white ghost. Yeah. That the color that comes through is whatever color my eyes are perceiving the best. And that's blue. And I do have blue eyes, so that makes sense. And I shaved with Jasper fucking shaving cream, which is known to get into your skull and your irises, which isn't good. So my vision's a little too bright in the blue spectrum. Yeah. Now, 
I have a lot, and you can imagine it, forming out of crystalline stuff from shaving my face. I can't believe they put it in that. That's so horrible. Um, more cones, because those are crystalline. Yeah. From Jasper, from just shaving my face than we would ever do to you, you know yeah. what I mean, in one color. And that right there is industrial poisoning. And they just put that right into shaving cream. That's why they're all blue. That's Jasper. Yeah, it is. So, um, all I'm trying to point out here is... In low light, I can see specifically blue spectrums, which is kind of uniform. People are lying. They're scientists that have even done this. They're choosing, everyone is, individually to change their vision like it's a science project while lying about it and not including me in this experiment. You know, my choice. Well, my yeah, products. what about LASIK vision that changes the shape of their irises so they see differently? Yeah, right? So my point here is this. Um, when they're seeing in blue... That's sponsored through Jasper and their shaving cream, the same was in mine. Yeah. And that's why there's too many Blu-rays. And, and uh, HD DVD that was supposed to be assigned to uh, Xbox and Microsoft, they haven't released one more because everybody says that the reds look less saturated because they don't come through a alpha channel that originates in the chromatic spectrum of blue, which does matter. You see my point? Yeah. It does matter. And I just proved it. Everybody sees it as too blue. And what do UHDs do? Add platinum to the disc. It's obvious. Yeah. So then you have brighter, brighter, brighter blues, and you're getting closer to more like my eyes vision, because I'm healthy. But it's not good. It's still too blue. You just can't see it as well when you have crappy eyes, but it's dissatisfying. Yeah. I'm pointing out how limited color spectrum still affect you when you have to fucking view them. Because your brain is computing it, even if your eyes aren't. And so that's not the whole story. Your emotions perceive it better, like as if you're seeing it better. Your bacterium floating in your brain's cellular units and your synapses, it perceives it differently than your eyes do once it reaches them. They can interpolate. Everyone can. They can say, ah, oh, that's too blue. Anything in your brain. Yeah. Even if you don't know why. Well, here's... That's why Sony cameras suck. Here's something random. Uh, when my, when the both sides of my vision are playing together nice, uh, I can force it to happen by, say, staring at the sun during the summer when it's extra hot. Then my left eye will be much greener and my right eye will be much, much more gold color saturated. And there's a when relation between gold and green. There is a relation, and that's what I was saying. The actual spectrum in the sky, the green and gold were swapping out for center place in the rainbow in weird ways over these years. And it seems like I'm pretty good at dialing in uh, the, my evolution with what the sun's doing so I don't, you know, burn to a crisp from a corona like everyone else does. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> um the corona of the sun is very important, and uh, that hasn't even been factored in when it comes to coronavirus shots or well, something. that's chrominance. In chrominance. The editor chart, yeah. that's called chrominance. It's the edging of more solid light around any object, like a chrome you know, piece on a vehicle, where it's still bright and somehow reflecting, but there's highlights of even brighter chrominance. Yeah. And the more you can control that chrominance, the better the camera you have. Because that means in that spectrum, it's still solid, yet it's putting solid light into that spot, too. It knows it's there, and it knows that even the solid light is not being blown out by, and it determines it as chrominance accurately down to the you know, last pixel for its definition. Yeah. Well, like what I was saying about my eyes is, it center channels in the rainbow spectrum... That just means that the sun, face it guys, the sun's a lot more powerful than your instruments and you're never going to measure up. And what that means is the sun is choosing the arrangement of colors in the rainbow based on its ratios and healing and whatever it's getting from other stars, you know, energy and who knows what else. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to get into it. So what that means is green and gold is always going to be centered, at least in this solar system. That's the way it's going to be, and so because that's... in all chlorophyll, and yeah. all plants go into everyone's skin and muscles. And, and we're going to admit that the amount of living green chlorophyll in this 
solar system, all the planets mostly work off of green, and so that's what hues the spectrum of the sunlight. The color of the living electricity in the plants, the sunlight hits that, it's all chlorophyll electricity, it's, it's hyper useful. And so um, I'd like to talk about color space here for a second, because it's really important. I think, feel like we've taken some steps backward that shouldn't have been done. Yeah. Now, when you look at cords, you'll see on old, you know, cameras, like the newer ones though that aren't as old, for certain hookups, um, professional ones, you'll see green, red, and blue, like for certain screens, when they're really good cameras from the past. Not the yellow, white, and red cables, two of which are for sound that stabilizes because of sound waves, like in this camera already. The, the, the color channels, basically. Yeah. Um, which is inferior if you don't have enough wavelength. You know, it's rare to have a camera that does with just sound waves. So I'm going to stick with these colors. Yeah. You know, red, green, and blue, which we've just left behind. It used to be in rear projection TVs that were massive and all these things, even in uh, some plasma screens. The problem here is the priorities off because let's say, you know, you have, I'm saying without even including the yellow that makes the green, of course, that should be the, the gold booster if you're going to do this type of screen. But why is the color space so bizarre now? We're going back to 90s color space where it's cyan in different colors, the spectrum of that from UV, because I know it's necessary for DJI cameras and QLED screens that use purple as their base background. But for other types of screens that currently exist, even using crystals, there's no reason not to have the correct colors. Yeah. So green has to hold priority. Green, it can't be RGB. It has to be green. Green is first because that's the priority of the color, you know, like how they're even, you know, like coming in through each other. It has to hold major priority green through gold. That's yeah. why all the, the RGB is considered such a bad color space because red, green, blue? Red isn't superior in No, the no, you have to understand when it, yeah, you are correct. Red, the, the red that people like were commonly getting out of their condensed blood by eating meat and a few other things. Peppers, peppers, bell peppers, things. Bell peppers all the things that I don't like that much. Not, yeah, strawberries, but you have to understand society they didn't have good strawberries. They were only getting California rotted green ones. Ugh. So no, people had very limited red color space. And yet people are very addicted to red around Any here. Any red light. Any Reflection, red. Perception. They love it. it. I don't know what Perceiving their problem is. It. So everybody just said they would sacrifice entertainment levels. They would sacrifice health. Anything to get more of that red color. You know the red five in... Um, you know, red hot this, red hot that, that's very poisonous. But that addiction to seeing red, that color. And, and they've gone so far that you'll probably hear articles saying that, I mean, that red, you know, it doesn't really even exist anymore. For, uh, for other people's eyes, it really doesn't. You've blown out entire, like, units of your brain the children like children that are being born have a fail safe basically in their dna to not seek red because what they're starting to perceive like i already said which is why there's uv purple cameras yeah. is what comes easily out of uv purple on either side of a certain spectrum zone uh well one direction you go into a cranberry color which most people consider red they're so blind including most people's children now yeah and on the other side of the uv spectrum which is why it's used in QLED screens and stuff now you have um this blue that's like almost a like purple but it keeps going and going and going deeper tell it is a blue but it's uv it's uv blue there's yes. uv red blue and green so the same aspects it can be employed potentially with a qled screen i don't know exactly how they're implementing it so i don't know how useful what i'm saying is yeah but i'm just saying the priority should still be on green though because even in a spectrum of uv don't prioritize that color either or else you're going to burn yourself out again what are you doing yeah like it, it's ludicrous to come from the concept that you're going to have a camera, what, that's just ultraviolet and ultra red, and then shift the two together to get all your colors through um, interpolation? 
That will literally kill everyone who's trying to f film that, let alone watch that. That's absurd. Like <laughs> everybody loves interlacing. They keep saying higher frequencies, more static electricity. Yeah. Let me zap it. Let me shock me when I touch it, even though it's like lead lined. Yeah. They just love interlacing, but it's not safe as progressive scanning or actual yeah. lasers or just shooting a color light image and receiving it. Which again. gets into this concept. Gold, green, and blue like to hang out at the center of the rainbow spectrum because they're more omnipotent, let's say. They're more stable. They are less damaged by the ionic disturbances of the universe and balancing as things blow one way or another way too much. They push through as a visible light source to eyes of animals and humans, etc. much more reliably. Which means they're more easily interpolated into skin, photonic receptors of any kind, because that's what people are yes. using those colors. So even if the color of those co those light colors are much more intense or hot, because they're more easily absorbed and or understood and hence bounced as necessary and dealt with, it is more enjoyable and longevity inducing to the human body to use those colors. Now let's talk a little bit about the complexity here of colors. So the reason why I said, for example, orange polymer, it's a medium not unlike a moisture, but instead it's a thick, you know, gelatinous substance. Yeah. It still takes on, especially, this is why I advise metal particles in it, these two concepts combined. That's why they're so good for screens as part of the elements in a full-on screen for a movie theater or a home system with QLED. Because what system are you actually going to use because your physical measurement devices have to be based on materials you can extract from plants or find on earth you know what i mean yeah they have to be made out of condensed ions at least that make a material yeah. that's that exists <laughs> that's what i'm trying to point out and in labs they'll make materials that don't exist stably and vanish again yeah so my point is this orange like is not orange when it's clear it's fluid it's juice right well, the orange polymer in a CCD is clear, but when you start spraying light through it, it will take on different colors as it rainbows and through it, if it's you know clear enough, into a spectrum of light depending upon how it's formed in a mold. Now, that's not good enough. That would be such pallid colors. That would be way lower than 8-bit. It would be like mostly white light. That's why you have to add a dyeing element to the gel because you can make polymer out of anything. You can make it out of a deeply chlorophyll minty you know, color and produce uh, beautiful Fujifilm greens type of feeling. Yeah. But the point here is that orange is the most easy. Everyone has access to orange, which is why it's so uniform and certain screens are doing this this way. And they all have access to polymers from orange because they're very industrially useful and everybody wants them. Addiction factor again. But what is your secondary addiction? What is going to produce the chrominance in that? Is it going to be silver in that, that gel? Is it going to be gold? Is it going to be bronze? There's an infinite number of different metallic elements with chrominance inherently built into them, into their ions that you could use. Even some crystals that do it glow a little bit themselves, fluoresce. Yeah. So what are you aiming for? What do you want out of your imagery? And what do you, what emotions do you want to evoke? That's why there's no one camera system is worth anything, no matter how expensive they claim, because it's only covering one spectrum of design, no matter how much you try to implement everything. Yeah. That's why even me, when I said a Harry Potter film that's experimental, different glasses you raise and lower with different types of gels. Yeah. And, you know, with the pain frequencies, like I said, and colors in them, so you get a different feeling for different scenes. Yeah. Because I need to know what people like. We need to be doing so much experimentation because it's not what you see, it's how you perceive it and how much you like it and what emotions you associate with it that increases your longevity. Yeah. And here's why the Roy G. Bev, you know, color space on the rainbow, what everybody did with their brain scientifically through, I'll just use the Subway Bread reference again, is say, no, they're getting pleasure out of assigning color spaces to their brain and forcing it. So what that means is different things they eat, crystals, metals, whatever hues, 
whatever from that gets slotted into spaces in their brain like along a rainbow. It has to for them to survive. Yeah, like as though they're getting a gay rainbow flag, t you know, basically tattooed across their forehead like, you know, faggots. Has nothing to do with gayness, I'm just saying. So, um, what that causes is, what your, your eyes are round, your skull is supposed to be round. Every point is supposed to have equal amounts of material to accept any color of the rainbow that you're used to from sunlight, you know, receiving. And everybody isn't doing that. They're all divided up into channels. Then those channels get over full with um, different energy from different sources, even their own thoughts mulling over something, and the actual spinning of energy through their skull because their brains are spun in spots. It all accounts for buildups of like colored energy in their brains that are in pain. And that's why he's saying it's so important. Society, through concentrated uranium, they ruined this color spectrum of gold from the sun and made it yellow, like I'm saying, watered down, then continued to say they were getting more and more addiction factor from drugs out of pushing all the way, you know, Roy G. Biv, from yellow to orange, all the way to red on the far end of the spectrum and just shoving red in their faces every orifice Which as long is the as possible. The lowest, lowest wavelength frequency of red and why they wanted that is because even if it kills you, burns your brain out, does whatever it does to your brain, anything, it's a lo slower wave Yes. Which means a slower wave wavelength, get scared now because this is zombification, of thought. So you're thinking slower, you even perceive the pain Red shift, slower. Yep. Red shift. Yep. And then you're like a dying star. Red stars are very frequently unstable and will supernova and collapse in on themselves. Yes. But unlike a star, you don't exist. You die and have a heart attack. And when something goes supersonic or supernova uh, with speed compared to you <laughs> statically sitting there, your light particles versus it, there's a red shift where you realize you're holding still basically and all the particles of light of whatever you're observing in space going past is so much faster that it's it's enjoying a deeper, richer sensation of life and colors and magnetism than you are currently. Think of it that way. I, enjoy, I would enjoy deep space travel if a high enough rate of speed is achieved. And it proves that the speed of light also affects the color ratios and what they do. Which is what we're going to get into right now, right here, one more time. This is the most important thing. What he just said there, you can still have it in your brains. Very simple. The higher the frame rate, the more color potential there is, the easier it is to go higher bit rate because of the overall data collection. Come on. A star yeah. outputs, another star receives that light. It's the same type of thing with a camera. How much bandwidth do you have to receive light? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Um... Yeah, all I was going to say was, okay, knowing that everybody had ruined themselves with the color red, because um, I studied this, like I did everything, basically, um, I reached the conclusion the best way to fix them would be with an ultraviolet source that they accept into their brains. and so that the far ends of the spectrum. It's the, it's the other end of the spectrum visible to our eyes on the energy graph as output by our sun magnetically. So, because of that, this, this little old fruit came along as the sun did this little old thing where it said, boy, there sure is a red color imbalance of humans on Earth. Let's uh, output a bunch of purple color. And lo and behold, the impossible was achieved. Uh, <laughs> the color of apples, which is an off-white color that's a high-frequency spectrum, uh, the inner flesh of an apple, that's actually a higher frequency spectrum than even platinum. Um, those crystals mixed, they were successfully mixed, this is what monk fruit is, apples with oranges. So um, those two colors mixed, orange with uh, that ultra apple vibrancy, achieved an ultraviolet so intense, so earth shaking, that it actually is interpreted by the body, those light crystals condensed through monk fruit or any other ultraviolet substance as like usually sweet to the human body as it 
as that light is at a frequency that as it's absorbed by the body and broken down, the bacteria in the body, all the way down to even the magnetic spinning of all the particles of the body, they're all lopsided off to the red spectrum, all barely held alive by their hearts, all dragged to the left side of their bodies. It's horrific. And so we made a, a movie, Loretta Sage, monk fruit cameras, then it shifted to all the other colors from the ultraviolet. Yeah, so they're all inverse ultraviolet colors. Yeah. The purples, the, the, you know, the greens, everything. So the movie's mostly purple and green, which is why I mentioned yes. it. To make the inverse of that, like the greens turn oranges, the purples turn to, to rich. Or, or is it the other way around? I don't quite remember uh, watching it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the colors invert is the point. Yeah, the inversion process. See, no one can argue with what I'm saying that there's colors that are sympathetic on the opposite end of the spectrums because colors invert magnetically for digital film or I mean not digital for regular film and that's utilized for different digital techniques to increase coloring. That's why coloring. we're so much ultraviolet light yeah. in every movie we can of different spectrums if we can get them to perceive yeah. it even. So what I noticed was people are fucked and they're such zombies they want to keep experiencing some sensation and they're so drugged up and ruined all their nerves and everything and their atoms themselves that they needed extreme pain that they interpret as sweet pleasure on the monk fruit end of ultraviolet to match what they've done to their bodies with the red. Then as soon as they have those comparisons in their body, everybody starts screaming and realizing they're hot and cold all over their body. They have coronavirus, etc., etc. frequencies with extreme yes. high frequencies. And so to combine and not successfully doing so. Yeah, and it's very dangerous. It can, it can kill people pretty easily, depending upon how imbalanced they've gotten. So then I realized, well, if I go around with ultra-concentrated orange acid, and I myself to survive, I actually... Eight orange crystal concentrates. Back in 2012, for several years there, I was just every night downing as many orange crystals as I could so that I could maintain color and not die of radiation. And so I uh, successfully did that. And it seems like there's been ultra concentration achieved from D limonene from orange. And it's even more beautiful from lime. You get this beautiful green hue for jungle colors. And that extract uh, didn't exist before like 2016. That's a new extract of, I think the colors have actually balanced in a crystal form. The sunlight has improved plants, you know? It's all getting better. I guess the final thing of notation that I would like to mention is just that when orange reacts, it has many different colors as we've already seen in Fantastic Beasts. It goes all across the spectrum in different ways. And some of these are actually UV in ways that are visible because of the way it's contained within the acid. And that's why acids are a very fantastic and unique form of what I would call Polaroid screen material, like a yeah. film reel, but you know, can continuously react uh, because they're so motile. What type of acid reaction can you get in a screen from different types of acid, whether it be strawberry, orange, anything? Yeah. So following my conclusions... That's why we eat so many fruit. Yeah. Following my conclusions scientifically, I can easily predict that the most popular color this summer is going to be indigo because... <laughs> Everybody's got to balance their brains, and that's the direction. The sun is solarly pushing everything. The tilt of the earth is wobbling. And as a result, colors are restabilizing. It's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to see our movies and pay us. Um, because indigo's on the opposite end of the spectrum from orange currently, so I'll probably be, you know, utilizing that somewhat in technology and fashion. Um, and then everybody will finally get rebalanced back to the center spectrums. And when that's achieved close enough, then they'll feel like, you know, they're more comfortable with their gender status, more comfortable with their hot-cold ratios across their body. Everything will improve. And then everybody can really have their own personalities, hobbies, and, you know, food obsessions, etc. And really start dividing out into individuals again as a society. Yeah. 
and then you get to do the thing that I always enjoy telling people, which is no camera's perfect, gotta catch them all, it's Pokemon. Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you feeling today? How does the light look today? Because the sun will just change in more years. It's yeah. solar patterns, it's winds always shift cosmically for eons out into the universe. And we have to be ready for these eventual shifts. We have to pre-perceive them so we don't become imbalanced again to the sun's energy, yeah. which gives light to everything, including our food that we eat, even if you only eat meat. This applies to everyone. And you can't only eat meat, you'll die in a day. Anyways, the point is this. Um, eat your colored vegetables. The better the colors, the better they are for you. Eat your colored fruits. The better the colors yeah. and saturation and depth that you can detect, the better they are for you. And they'll make you be able to perceive any color that they're from. If you have a camera and you've eaten nothing but strawberries, you can perceive those split reds and blues from that acid. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, strawberry's great because it really balances people's brains automatically. So <laughs> that's how even though we had bizarre fluctuations in populace who was living around us, we'd always get repeat customers of the few people that were around each year because they need balance, you know? The fact they're around means they have better balance than everyone else, exactly. automatically. Because strawberry may appear to be supposedly red at some times. It's definitely entirely in the pink spectrum. And but pink can be concentrated. And yes. that's what the, there's these side channels yes. of frequencies into a deeper color because pink all it is is too light. You could technically add white to red until it's burning so hot that it's more white than it is red and then it would appear pink again. Either direction, pink is either low frequency or high frequency, which is why it's so important. Yeah. And so everybody's abused red so much that there's not much red products left. Instead, they're now using ultra pink, which in my opinion, here, here's how metaphysical I am. I think <laughs> that I, um, these strawberries are actually, uh, they originally grew around redwoods. They're redwood fruits. They grow on giant redwood trees and they're very acidic. And so they're actually mushroom based fruit and they actually have mushroom roots themselves. So the reason why they auto-balance you is because of that factor. And the reason you can pump so much energy into that pink spectrum of strawberry is because it's a mushroom living spectrum. So I did infinite pink beds, light treatments, to support my strawberry farm, you know, I've eaten continuously. And it's great. Like, you can feel, like, the hum of nerve energy upgrade, like, from all the pink light. Yeah, people want to know the safest frequencies of fruits, while on the other side, still splitting colors of safe frequency of fruit, you have blueberry. Its blues are a little pale, and it's more of a priority on purple. Its blues resemble a little bit of the lighter blue spectrums of orange acid, because orange is so orange, it doesn't produce a natural blue it produces like a baby cerulean blue with even more chrominance in it yeah and so it's similar to that while being a little more gentle on the eyes in certain ways and a little more useful to people's visions visually it doesn't quite as blown out to their eyes because it's literally what they can see yeah um and it produces a beautiful saturated deepish red yeah and purples this is the point on either side of those spectrums uh, from a blueberry so you're bleeding back in. You see how there's certain priorities of foods that when you're damaged color-wise in your DNA and brain are better for you. And strawberries and blueberries are fantastic for that reason. Well, I just got to point out, strawberries are actually containing <laughs> all colors into the pink spectrum. Like... Well, it's because pink, in the case of strawberries, is infinite different gamma rays from the sun that are split up and recombined from bouncing off. Pink is combined spectrums, infinite numbers of them from passing through the air, from coming off of the sun, bounced off of the ground, because pink is just saying red, which is a low frequency, is picking up energy, 
into a, a pinkish color. Yeah. When it comes to strawberries, at least. Not yeah. always the case, everything's different. So you're really getting a step up in your slow wavelength of red from poisoning, even if it's through legitimate, like, ruby poisoning. Yeah, it's like they an put acid. Every color of red in food, you have to realize. Yeah, acid from strawberries slowly melts you back to the center spectrum point, in other words. So if you even, like, we have to give people their options back. If they were going to poison themselves, even, because they, they never seem to stop. You'd have to give them the option to show them what that color is from, not just F, D, and C. Is it Jasper? Are you putting a gemstone into yourself? Or are you putting a powdery mineral into yourself yeah. that's lesser? Like, you know, how, what's the hardness? What's the, you know what I mean? Your body can't just handle certain things just because they're there and it's a color and it says it's a food and drug administration color. Yeah. I mean, it gets so complex because there's, um... Foods that contain massive amounts of certain gemstones, and those can either be picked up that are already in the soil, or they can be created by the plant itself. And it gets really complex. There's so many factors. So, um, what's interesting is when it comes to batteries for storage, often they're green. Like this, I have the camera's about to run out of battery. In fact, we've been talking so long, but. Most of them are green battery storage because that's really stable. It's the least likely to explode. It's the center priority spectrum on this planet, Al, basically. And really simple, as I just talk about it really quick. Green. A leaf is green. It contains water, which is blue. It also contains gold, you know, in yeah, the same structure. The sunlight. So, no matter what frequency of energy you have going into the battery, it's least likely to blow up when it has a green chlorophyll-like structure of cell units to store it. Which would be interesting to actually film a movie in green, like green cameras, and then split out from that. Yes, like what? Like Jade, like, you know, the Dragon Emperor used to in China, make green Jade movies, and then split the colors from that with enhancements of dyes from other stuff. You know, there's, there's different ways of doing it. You also have to remember the final and most important factor when it comes to cameras and everything in general. Different colors may be the color you want, but the second you put them on a surface, they start re-interacting with that surface and the light hitting it, and you not get what you want. You might get the exact opposite color. Yeah. It's the same with any fruit. Sometimes you'll get purple out of what looks like red or Yeah, red. but that's the like great purple. thing about making entertainment is that you might get a totally different result and you don't say, oh, well, we're scientists and we failed. You say, well, that's a new result. That'll entertain people. They've never seen that before. And that's my point is that cameras never say you've made a mistake if you're getting a new unique color. Yeah. And if you can somehow suspend without oxygen certain fruit acids in a, like a pane between two glasses or in gel, you can get those colors that you want and not have to get them to touch something, if you could do it right. Yeah. Okay, so I have this problem where everybody's seeing with just their left eye spun and their right eye's optics are spun into their left eye up into their brain. And what that means is they're using this stupid crystal shape to refract colors only for their left eye. And so, in Platinum and other programs, you know, Sony Vegas Editor, there's, there'll be this box graph that's like flat and you can drag up or down like it's an irregular graph. But that needs to be in full 3D so I can like grab and, and look around at a 3D. And that needs to be mapping the actual available colors live out of the computer, out of the... the <laughs> from the power supply and how that's being capacitated through the graphics card and CPU and what visible color units are then being drawn to the screen slash video editing project in the RAM so that then it can actually be pulled and tugged on in different ways at any magnetic angle in that box and represented by the realistic, you know, yeah, so you frequencies of electricity. And you can see all four sides representative yeah. of a circle, but in a way that plainly people can see, like the Rubik's Cube we were giving an example of that looks different yeah. on color sides. How, you know, whatever power supply you uniquely have, whether yeah. it's platinum, gold, whatever, how it's supplying the base light into your graphics card and CPU mm -hmm. to shade the cube at different angles where there's supposedly different color luminance values represented on each side so that yes. you can see what the luminance values of each color is at every angle. 
Yeah, because the twisting, your DNA itself is twisting one direction. My DNA both twists both directions. And so what that means is I'm seeing all the colors represented through my right eye reflected, you know, opposite also. And that just means that um, when I'm using that box, it's yeah. like your brain works better. I'm able to drag off the box and it's flat, so I have to drag off the box and imagine the curve of the magnetism of the program. It lets me do this. Drag around to pull in colors around the magnetic spectrum to cross interpolate. Well, you're talking about a different box now. There's the color panel box, then there's the other one where it's got the wavery line. Yeah, that. That's yeah. what I meant the whole time. The sine wave box or yeah, whatever it's but called. I prefer that combined with the color spectrum box. You can yeah. see UV on one side of the cube, every color represents. Presented in, you know. Well, yeah, these different programs that are in flat need to be represented in 3D in a new video editor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then I can really get to work and dialing in the colors for 3D glasses in the left or right with my vision so everybody else will perceive to the edges of their vision spectrum what they can and really get maximum entertainment and heal the rest of their brains and all those spots that they can't see but can still receive that data and extrapolate in their imaginations that they saw it for later. Too. Emotionally they'll be more appreciative. Much more. You gotta have all the spectrums. I know everybody's blind as a bat and use sounds waves and this is like a spectrum Proof. graph. Yeah, look at that. Of of the, the colors bouncing up and down, pr proving they hear with their ears too, and why monk fruit that's fertilized by bat feces is so good for them because the flowers are, because yeah. it just helps them in their color spectrums of purple and being able to see. Yeah. I don't work that way, so imagine the final uh, element of this like he's showing me because I'm talking about it. I can't read the spectrograph. It's the same as me needing a Rubik's Cube with chromatically angled colors on it like that dolphin poster to make different perspectives when I click and drag it up and down. Yeah. I can't even read this. If this is implemented into a new version of Sony that's my version of the program because I know how to edit it and I won't know how to edit other things, I need to be able to view the yeah. image from every angle to know what I'm doing. So it's fascinating to see them admit that the braille is that certain color spectrums move slower to their eyes from whatever surface is bouncing off of, creating you know, them interpolating the data of whichever's arriving first as that color. They're color blind. Yes, that's the definition of color blind. It's interpreting everything as gray truly instead yes. of just in true interpreting pure yes. white. That's why then they add in color by eating foods and then their brain fires electricity uh, that's been received by their eyes through the color dyes in their head and then it's then colored into their imagination as vision, which is why they're so slow. Instead of from pure white light, so that their frame per second perception is bad, everything's yeah. bad. People's brains are fucked up. 24 frames is not yeah. ideal. And what I'm saying is that um, we need a live, like my computer's powerful enough that I built in 2015, not this one, um, the one upstairs. It's platinum power supply can render an entire magnetic stable algorithm graph like live you know like how a um how they say bit mining or whatever they were doing that that's just spinning a circular loop of energy well that's what um I'm losing my track of thought, but... What CPUs do? They're like yeah. miniature hard-on colliders? And then they, they gather the colors by spinning up enough speed, and then the particles at any point anywhere can be tilted with energy shafts and be uh, viewable as different colors on the magnetic spectrum. And this can even be in, implemented into NVIDIA LiDAR from a uh, plasma ball if center effect, yeah. like I was saying, out and then across the edges of the cube, which is like a 1.44, like you know how there's one, uh, the... 3.14? 3.14, yeah. that's 1.44, so you're still observing even magnetism of light over flat planes that you can observe, so your limited eye color space can determine when you zoom in to the angles of the Rubik's Cube and determine the angles of the color as you move it different directions, so you know what your image is going to look like. Yeah.